listen, you're no dummy. You know that the majority of people that are visiting your website are visiting from a mobile device. But did you know that mobile converts twice as many people as desktop? Yet most designers, most platforms prioritize desktop design over mobile, which means their themes, their designs are focused on desktop and then they're shrunk down or optimized for mobile. When in reality, they should be doing the opposite. You should be designing it for mobile first and then optimizing it for desktop. Now, it's a little bit different depending on the industry and we're gonna focus a little bit more on e-commerce, but if you're B2B, it's a little bit more, it's not 50-50, but it's a little bit more even. You have a lot of people visiting on desktop because they might be visiting from their office uh, whereas e-commerce is primarily mobile. But just think about that. If you're not optimizing for mobile, it means you're losing half the conversions. So here are my tips that you can use in the next 24 hours to see if your website is optimized. Now, first, the most simple thing to do is go find a very big player in your space or in any space that you know has a team of people focusing on their website. Nike, Gymshark, uh, Tesla, um, Goldman Sachs, you know, whatever your industry is, just think of a big player, go to their website. Now have it side by side, use your friend's phone or coworker's phone or whatever. You've got one, we've got one of these websites on your phone and on your friend's phone, you've got your website. Now compare the following, look at your headline and your title font sizes. A lot of times on mobile, they're blown way up, again, because they're just coming from desktop, and the spacing is all weird. Look at the text spacing and the font sizes and compare the two. Generally, you're probably gonna wanna shrink yours down a little bit. Next, look at button sizes. Again, this is kind of common. More common than not, than not, the button sizes are too big for mobile, but sometimes they could be too small. And again, compare it with the professional big time player site that you're looking at. Uh, next, you wanna make sure that your image sizes are not off the page. So this one is less common these days, but still we see where images are cut off because they're not uh, uh, constrained properly. Now, a little bit more on this in just a moment. All right, next, make sure that you have a heat map tool, something that you can see where people are clicking. Now, some common ones would be Hotjar if you just want a heat mapping tool, VWO if you want a full conversion rate optimization tool, it has heat maps in it. But regardless, you wanna make sure you see where people are clicking. And a lot of times with a website that's not optimized for mobile, they're clicking on whatever looks like a button or whatever looks like it should be clickable, and it's not always the thing you want them to click on. If you're B2B, it might not be the book a call or view our case studies or, um, or fill out this form button that you want them to fill out. And in the e-commerce space, it might not be your top selling product, your most profitable product, or your lead generation uh, funnel, you know, your newsletter funnel, uh, email marketing funnel, right? So look at that heat map tool and see where people are clicking the most because that might be where you need to put a button or you might be, they might be clicking on something that's not even supposed to be a button. Okay, next you wanna make sure that your site speed is optimized. You can use a simple tool, it's free, Google's PageSpeed Insights tool, just Google it, look it up, uh, load your website in there and it will measure your page performance, most likely your, mostly your page speed. And if you have anything that's underneath an 85, you've got some work to do. Anything over an 85 is, is decent. Here are some things you can do to increase your spite, site speed. Number one is look at your images. A lot of times image files are huge and they, uh, they have l large load times. So you can use a, a platform uh, called Tiny PNG to optimize your images and greatly increase your site speed. Next, if you're a global company, you can use a CDN, a, a content delivery network, which basically, um, instead of having one place that all your content is coming from, like AKA in the United States, but they're viewing it in the UK, it spreads out your content so it will load faster in different areas that they're viewing that website. Also, make sure you don't ask unnecessary questions or for unnecessary information on your website. You want a frictionless experience as much as possible, particularly on mobile. Remember, people on desktop have a little bit more time. They're typically sitting down, they're at a computer, they have more patience. People on a phone, they're standing up, they're moving, they're in the 
uh, the, the subway or on a bus or in the car or in an Uber or something like that, right? So they don't have a lot of time. You want to make sure that you're getting them right to the place they need to be. So a lot of times, let's, cost, let's talk about lead generation. Just ask for their email. You can get name, information, all that stuff later. Even if you're B2B, just ask for the email. You can get the, the, the rest of the stuff later. If you're e-commerce, make sure you're chasing that one-click checkout as best you can. If you are using Shopify, you're already halfway there because a lot of websites have Shopify and it gives people the opportunity to use the shop app where all their information is already loaded in. Google Chrome stores information already. So do your best to have one-click checkouts so that they can get right to the place, which is making that purchase, making that order as quickly as possible. And in your checkout, your cart experience, make sure that you don't have anything jarring or weird. No slide-in carts uh, on a mobile phone. No pop-ups where they're half cut off on a phone. Don't get fancy. Simple is better. Shopify, my opinion, the best. They just ask for an email. It'll probably load in the rest of your information automatically. And if it doesn't, it's still a pretty easy uh, process to get to the actual purchase. On another note, you want to also make sure that you're giving people all of the options or the things that they need to know up front so that they're not hit with something later on, like shipping costs. So if you're in the U.S., you offer free shipping in the U.S. If you're in Canada, maybe there's $5 shipping, Canada or Mexico. And if you're global, maybe it's $10 shipping global. But if somebody's buying a $50 product, then all of a sudden they get hit with a $50 shipping, you're going to lose them most likely if you haven't communicated that up front. So make sure you're very clear with your shipping and then give them options if possible. Overnight shipping, $20. Two-day shipping, uh, $10. Uh, three to five-day shipping, free. You know, something like that, right? That way they can pick if they want to spend the money or not. All right, quick little bonus tip is A, B, test everything. Now, if you're watching this and it's just you, it's hard to keep up with this stuff. So hire somebody, hire a firm to design your website for you and install these things. And when you look into A-B testing, you can use a software like VWO, which is what we use. It's a great platform. It allows you to A-B test everything from images to headlines to copy, all, all the color, button colors, things like that to figure out which one is the best. You could also use landing pages. A uh, platform like Unbounce, where you can design a few different landing pages and test which one performs better based on colors and copy and images. Uh, you can also use backend tools, Google Analytics, to, to uh, test which page gets more traffic. My point is you want to try to A-B test everything, particularly on mobile because you've got a lot of different people that are visiting from a lot of different places with a lot of different patients levels and a lot of different intent. And so you want to try to measure where they are coming from. Facebook ad, Google ad, Google organic search, email, direct, uh, whatever it might be. And then you also want to test that to what they are doing on that page. Again, this is where a VWO platform, uh, I'm not an affiliate or anything like that, uh, will come in handy. All right. So if you want a free audit of your website, click the link below. You can sign up. You don't actually have to be there. It's my Calendly link. I'll do a free 15-minute review of your website and the user experience and give my professional opinion on things like button, copy, text, uh, and the general customer experience that somebody would have on your website. So sign up below. You can attend it live. Meet me face-to-face. -face. I'll go through it with you. Won't sell you anything unless you want it. Or if you don't want to attend, uh, I'll film a Loom video and I'll send it to you. You and your team can do with it what you will. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video.